Before it is guys, this is a video you've all been waiting for, how to wire in a switchboard. First thing you want to note about these, you want one that's a sufficient size for the house that you're installing it in. This one here is a 30 way, each bar corresponds to a 15 way. Now what I mean by way is how many single pole breakers you can fit in there. So on the bottom line here I can fit 15 in and on the top line I can fit 15 in. Remembering that RCDs take up two slots. So here goes the RCDs, I'll be wiring them into this house. Now what you want to make sure on these ones is that they've got the wee ACDC symbol there. Don't buy some Chinese crap that doesn't, it's not compliant New Zealand or Australia. Before I go through all this with you, I'll go through the parts, all this stuff that comes in the switchboard when you buy it. So what we've got here first is some bus bars. Now these are simply to go on the switchboard, they go under your breakers and under your RCD, just like that. So that power comes into the RCD, goes through the bottoms of all these breakers and then goes out to your circuits out the top of them. Next thing, main earth tag. Throw it on the main earth in the board. It's not illegal not to, but it's best practice to do it. Screws there. Pretty self-explanatory, mount the cover on the, the switchboard. Sometimes you don't end up using these because they're pretty crap to line up with the wee holes in here. So you tend to just use some square drive super screws. These wee links here, these are to use as an MEN link when you've got your earth and neutral bars together. In this switchboard here, I've customised it myself. So a lot of the time you come up with bars these bars here down the bottom but because this is a retrofit house and all the cables are currently cut to length I think I'm going to struggle to get a cable that's long enough to come down to the bottom here so I've moved all the bars to the top that there's going to be my neutral bar that's my big earth bar and these five here are for your RCD bars now so for your RCD you have your main neutral coming in off the neutral bar and then the same side that goes out to your circuits you go out to the RCD bar and then all of those circuits neutrals come into these. Now there is another way of doing them using these wee things. You can actually plug those into the neutral in the bottom of your RCD and then your neutrals for your sub circuits just come straight out of these. I have hardly used these. I don't think they're as tidy as doing it in the switchboard like this but it can save a lot of time. These are just covers for if you don't use the entire 15 ways and you have gaps between your breakers. So you throw your cover on, you've got some gaps in there. Just grab some of these. and they just push in there like that. Right, this video is going to be recorded in three parts. First part here will be setting up the switchboard. What I'll do is I'll do all of the wiring for the phases and the neutrals, all the RCD wiring in here before I actually install the board. Now the breakers you're going to want, so I've been through the RCDs. We're going to put all of our sockets on 16 amp breakers and our lighting circuits on 6 amps. The other thing is when you're upgrading to RCDs, it is sometimes hard in houses that aren't new to put your lighting circuits on the RCDs. So a lot of the times neutrals are crossed throughout the house. The other ones that I've got here, 32 amp, changing 30 amp from the oven. Make sure it's wired in 6 mil. If it's not, throw it down to 25 amp. 63 amp for the main switch, and that's a main switch disconnector. That's not a 63 amp MCB. MCB and circuit breaker are exactly the same thing. Just the M stands for miniature. Now we've got 20 amp. That's going to be for the sub main, which is the garage feed. So I've got another switchboard in the garage, and that one I'll be upgrading for a surface mount board, so a bit different to this one. But I'll do a video on that at some point. And then we've got our hot water circuit. Uh, now these ones don't have to be on an RCD because they're fixed wired appliances or they're sub mains. For your circuits on RCDs, you want to have a maximum of three sub circuits per RCD. Try not to exceed the 40 amps here. So we've got two 16s and a 6. So that's one light circuit and two socket circuits. The other thing is, you want to split your light circuits up. If you can get them on an RCD, you don't want them all on the same RCD. That's an idiot move. Because what happens is that when you get a fault, 
is that the RCD trips and then all of your light circuits in the house are out so you've got no lighting anywhere. But if you've got them on different ones then obviously only a portion of the house will be without lights. Okay, I'll go show you the old switchboard. So there's a switchboard here that I'll be ripping down, throwing it in the bin. What I want to do with that switchboard out there is flush mount it so it looks nice, it's flush in with the jib here. The only way to feasibly do it is to rip the skirting off and then there'll be a bit of jib stopping and painting. If it was for a customer, cheapest way is to do a surface mount, whether it's on top of this or not, but a surface mount, you'd have it sticking off the wall about six inches, you know, so the door's open out here. Right, so next thing, you wanna go and count up what you got, examine all the circuits, and write them down on a bit of paper. These hot water switches here, they just go, they don't count as a circuit breaker, because their circuit breaker is elsewhere, either that one or that one up there that's got water heating on it. So what I've got here on this card is all of the breakers off that board, what rating the breaker, the fuses were. Now these, I believe are socket circuits, but there's a 5 amp one here I'm unsure about. And I know there's a spa circuit. What I want to do is just go around and try and figure out what breaker goes to what circuit. So what I found was that 5 amps just lighting circuit. Wait as, so next part. Let's set the switchboard up. First thing you want to put in, main switch, bottom left. I always put it in on the bottom left, wherever it's feasible. As I was saying before, I like to have the main switch on the bottom left, but sometimes it's not feasible and you've got to put it up the top. As long as the location of this is under two meters, you're absolutely fine. Now the RCDs that you want for a normal domestic house are these 40 amp, 30 milliamp, rated RCDs. So 63 amp main switch. Next thing we got is our oven. Putting on a 32. It is an induction cooktop and it is supplied in 6 mil. When you're putting your breakers in, don't uprate them at all. Especially with cable sizes and if you're not sure what switch gear is on the tail end of the circuit. 20 amp, I'll be putting them for a sub main. Now be aware that these ones here are not going to be on an RCD. 16 amp for my hot water cylinder. And then, because I'm going to be installing an alarm unit soon, this house has got an alarm unit, I'll be getting rid of that one and installing a brand new one. Uh, so I'll put in a 6 amp breaker for that. So that one there is just going to sit there. It's not going to get wired out to a circuit or anything at the moment. Now, the RCD circuit. So what I'll do is I'll see how many circuits are in the house. So we've got 3 lighting circuits. We've got 3, 6, 7, 8 socket circuits. So if we go 8 socket circuits divided by 4 is 2 and then lighting is 3 so we need 4 RCDs in this house so what I want to do, fill up this top row first I want to leave a gap here in case I do decide in the future to run more circuits for different things and that don't need to be on an RCD now as you can see I've grouped these up so I've gone two socket circuits and one lighting circuit per RCD. You want to go three sub circuits for each RCD and try and keep it under the 40 amp rating of the RCD itself. So as you can see I've got two 16s for socket circuits and a 6 for the lighting circuits. So we've got our three lighting circuits, two, four, six sockets, so we just need two more socket circuits. Now I have got a spa. and I'll be putting that on a 20 amp breaker. I'm not sure what circuit it is yet. But it will be one of these. So I'm going to make the spar on the bottom row here. The other thing is, I don't need this circuit breaker in here. It is just for a spacer. At the moment, I might take it out. I might just leave it in there. So as this sits right now, what we're going to have is we're going to have the main earth coming into the earth bar here. And all of the earths from every single circuit will be in that earth bar. We're going to have the main neutral coming into the neutral bar here. And then all of the neutrals that go out to the RCDs will screw into the RCDs. And also the neutral of these circuits here will go into the neutral bar as well. There will also be an MEN link between the main earth and the main neutral bar, which you want in a domestic installation. The phase comes in and into the main switch here. And then it goes out on one of these bus bars to each one of these loops into the RCD here, goes out to each one of these, and it's the same on all the RCDs, 
and then out the top of these goes out to your circuits and out the top of these ones here goes out to your circuits. The neutrals of the circuits on the RCD goes into each one of these and these are connected to the corresponding RCD. You'll see what I mean if you're a bit confused or whatever when I wire them in. Another thing that I like to do is ring feed and I know it's a big thing in the UK uh, where a lot of the circuits in the house are actually ring fed so say you have a cable running and looping off three sockets there will be a second cable from the last socket that goes back to the switchboard and that the whole circuit is supplied from both ends so in the switchboards I do that where just to balance the load so that I've got a 6mm running from the main switch to the RCD to the next one and then back to the main switch at the end and I'll show you guys what I mean with that. So what you'll need for the wiring inside the switchboard is a 6mm conduit wire, red and black. You can just buy a 6mm TPS and peel it off or you can actually buy rolls of just the cores. Anyway, I'll strip these back and make a couple of piles of them. Sweet, so I've got some here. Now the majority of the time when I install switchboards, I put these in last. I get all the wiring sorted out first. Because I've got time on my hands, I'm gonna be doing it this way. First thing, I always don't I always assume that the main feed is gonna to be too short to come into the bottom of the main switch. So I always put it in the top here and then out the bottom, trim one of these bus bars down. So I'll make these bars up now. So we want five there. Get your sideies out. Cut it down. Keep it flat so there's so it's not cut on an angle. Cut the plastic off there. These bus bars here come with switchboards as well. As you can see, the surface area is quite a lot smaller than these ones. That's why I prefer to use these thicker ones. But these thin ones are actually really good because you can bend them and manipulate them a wee bit when you've got circuit breakers in people's houses of different sizes. Because all my switch gear is matching in here, because it's all Snyder gear, I won't be needing to manipulate any bus bars. That one there is ready to go in, but we're not going to put it in there yet. We'll cut these other ones, so we want four, 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 four. So four, four lengths of fours. Might just trim a wee bit off the edge here, so the plastic's not too bulky. And when it sits in the insulation there, there's enough insulation on either side. So that's one of four. So that's all of these sorted. All we can do is put the RCD ones in. Now the left hand side of the RCD is the neutrals. So we're not gonna worry about that. Now at the top here, I'm gonna have my incoming feed. And at the bottom here, I'm gonna have my feed out, which supplies these breakers here. So I can put one of these bus bars I cut down to four into the circuit there. And you want to use a proper posi driver. There are certain breaker, circuit breaker screwdrivers you can get, but I don't bother with those. Screw them in and make sure that all your terminals are done up tight. Right, so I've fired them all in, as you can see. They do stick down a wee bit, unlike their counterparts, which do fit in flush. I'm not gonna dwell on that. What I want to start with is the neutrals. So here's my cable here. Cut the bent end off it, strip it back a wee bit. When you're putting cables into screw terminals, like these ones up here, you want to twist them up, makes it stronger. But when you're putting them into clamp terminals, which are what's inside these, so the screw screws two clamps together inside these breakers and RCDs, you don't want to twist these up, you want to have them flat, so it compresses the copper, just like that, and there's more surface area used. If you had them twisted up, then it would only be touching the top bit and the bottom bit. Neutral here is going to come out of the neutral bar at the top. Twist her up. And we'll trim it down slightly. So it'll fit nicely in the neutral bar at the top. Now the first slot here I'm going to have reserved for the main neutral. This slot here I'll have reserved for the MEN link. Now don't over tighten these, do the old pull test every time. And so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to bring the neutral down the side here. And I'm just going to run it straight to the neutral here. Hopefully you can see, get your finger under there, bend it down on a nice angle, then correct the corner. Run it down the side. Hide it down, tuck it under the bar here. 
so it's not visible. Put a nice curve on it there. Cut it right there where I got my thumb. Now I'm not twisting these up. Throw it into the top. Now you want to make sure that the clamps in these only clamp down onto the copper and not onto the insulation. So just watch it every time you put one in. Do the old pull test. Now you've got to be aware with these RCDs is that you have the line on the same side. So in here I have my line on the top which is your neutral in and your phase in. So the power from the main switch comes into the top as the power from the neutral bar comes into the top. Then the power out to the circuits out the bottom and the neutral out to the circuits to these RCD bars out the bottom. If you have it in balance then the RCD will trip as soon as you draw load on that circuit. So as soon as you turn a light on or plug an appliance in it'll trip the RCD. Same again for each of these. Right so all the neutral feeds are in. As you can see the next thing I want to do is throw the neutral load side out onto each one of these RCD bars. So for this I'm going to make this RCD1. It's going to go to the RCD1 bar here. Two, three and four. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is do number one. So with this one what I want to do is put the neutral in, run it up, across and then straight up here into the bar. Now be aware that when this switchboard is installed on the wall I am probably going to take a couple of these cables out up here just so I can get cables in behind and run them tidily to where I want to get them to. Throw it in. Screw it up. Cut it to length. And this tailwind is going to go under the bar. So just where it is now. Into those terminals there. Right now crank these screws up properly. Do the old pull test. Every time you fit a cable in, do the pull test. There goes one done. Number two here to RCD2. Right, so all those neutral loads are in. All into the RCD bars up here. Now I'm going to throw a few cable ties in here. I'll be throwing black ones in to match the colour. I'm going to throw one in here, one in here and one in here to make it stay tidy over time. So the cable ties are in, what I'll do is I'll cut them off. Now a good thing to do with these is once you've cut them off you can turn these tabs around and hide them behind the cables so they're not noticeable. So I'll spin the ties around so it looks all tidy in there. Next thing we're going to want to do is do our feeds and put our bar in here. So I'm going to ring feed it, I'll loop the feed out into the top of each RCD and then loop it back into the main switch. So the best way to start this is from the second point in. So I'll be running the phase cable from the bottom of this breaker here to the top of here. That bar will go in there to complete the circuit and the final one will come into the bottom of this. So I've got a cable out here and a cable in here. Sweet as. So you get your red cable here, start on the second RCD here. So this one here, I'll be running down to the bottom of this. But screw it down, not too tight, just so it's holding it in place. So you can manipulate it and then unscrew it and we'll put the second one in. So we'll cut this one to length, probably to where my thumb is. Thread it down without pushing the other cables down. Strip the end off. Okay, bugger this. I'm going to go get my cable strippers. Now that I'm over halfway through, I decided to go and get my cable strippers out. They are much easier for this sort of application where I've got my camera tripod here and the board's there just to get into some tight spaces. Okay, so that's ready to slide in there when we put the bar in. Now we'll get the next end. Stripper off. As you can see how much easier that was. One screw this one. Make sure they go in side by side, not on top of each other. That way the clamp will clamp down on them evenly and you won't get a loose cable in there. And then screw it up. Now this phase here will be going into the top of this breaker. 
Knock it down even with the other one. Now we'll cut this to length, probably about with my thumbers. Now this end here won't come out the top. Well, we'll strip the end off before we put it in. Grab my long nose pliers. Pull the end out here, make a nice loop and throw it in. Now you want to get the next piece. Strip her off and cut her back a wee bit. Because it's a bit long. Throw her in the top with that one. Now we'll tighten it up. Now I'm going to loop the rest off camera, bring the last one down to the bottom of this. Rightio guys, so all the feeds are in, they're all looped round. The last thing that I need to do here is screw these two in, one in either end, and smash one of these bus bars underneath with them. The other thing I'll be doing is chucking a cable tie on the backs of these reds just to keep them together and in line make it make it nice and tidy one thing you'll find with these bus bars is the cable can only sit bloody thing the cable can only sit in front of it so you don't want to be putting a cable in under it so what we'll do is we'll put this in first and then we'll sit our cables in front of each terminal now we'll tighten it up you're going to make sure these cables can go flat so it can clamp in the bus bar behind it as well. Now you've clamped the outside one up, do the old pull test, make sure that the bar and the cable's in there nice and tight. Then what might help in this instance is clamping the second one in, unclamping this one, just so it pulls the bus bar into the bottom. Because you want to line these up so that the cover's going to fit on nicely. That's a bit better that time. And nothing's coming out. Now get the front one in the bottom of the main switch. Now we'll work our way back from the middle one, clamp the bar in nice and tight, do the old pull test, it's good, it's in there firm, tidy these loops up at the bottom. So that completes step one, basically how to set your switchboard up. Oh what I'll do quickly first, throw these cable ties on and what I'll be using is some red cable ties to match the cable colour so you can't see them. So again with these cable ties, We'll be cutting them off and pushing them back down behind here so they keep it all together nice and tidy. So cable ties are in. Now a couple of important things. First one is make sure that your copper is flush with the line of the top of the breaker so that you can't actually, well, barely see it. The other thing is once you're done manipulating cables, especially if it's two of them in one of these terminals, is to go round and re-tighten them, make sure they're tight still because what tends to happen is you get them on different angles they might not have clamped down flat so when you twist them around they might come loose so just go around and check it all again but that there is how to set up a switchboard to install and next video will be removing the old one and then throwing this new one in I will probably have to remove just these cables from the bars up here just to get cables in behind but we'll see what happens when I get into it